Hi everyone, this is Tanya from Very Fun Yarns coming to you from my kitchen, which also doubles as my dye studio. And I'm going to take you with me for the next couple days. I'm going to be doing some dyeing, some experimenting with different uh, dye stuff that is dried. And a few things that are kind of come out of my freezer from last summer. But I'm going to take you with me and kind of show you what I'm doing, give you a little bit of a tour of what I do when I dye naturally here at Firefly Berries. So step one is turning this stuff, for lack of a better word, all of these powders and bark and things that I have, most of these I have purchased. Um, they're dye stuff, things that I cannot grow here in Minnesota. So they give me a distinct color that's also difficult to get out of the plants. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this dried stuff and adding water to it, simmering it, making it into a dye that is usable for me to use on the yarn. So I've started, first thing I'm making today, you can kind of see it in there, it's a little steamy, is some avocado pits. I am simmering and I have broken those up to make it easier for the dye to come out. So that's the first one. These will simmer about an hour. This one is annatto seeds, which doesn't really look like much right now because it's just a bunch of seeds floating around in the water, but hopefully it will turn into a bit of an orange color. This, if you ever pay attention to your cheese at the grocery store, often is colored with annatto dye to make it orange. So this weekend I'm working on warm colors, I guess I could call it, reds, yellows, oranges, pinks, things that um, when I combine them will give me different shades in that color family. So I'm also, on top of that, I'm going to be using some browns, so cut resin which comes from a tree that I get in as well as simple coffee because that will change the shade just a little bit when I add in that brown it'll muddy the color a little bit. So some of the dyes that I use I simply simmer on the pots over here on the stove and then I let them cool. They have to simmer usually anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Other times I can get the colors simply by boiling water and pouring it over the dye stuff. So for instance two that I'm going to do right now um, red quebracho which is from a tree, where did I put that? Comes to me in a powder, kind of like this. It makes beautiful pink, pinky brown kind of colors when it's by itself. And then also matter root, which can be grown here in Minnesota, although I've not yet planted any. Take that back, I planted it once, but it got weedy, it got out of control, and I could not keep up with it. So anyway, they take the roots from the plant and they crush them up because if you think about a root like say like a dandelion that's kind of a kind of like tuberous and very hard to there's not much surface area that's what I'm trying to say and so the same goes with the matter roots you have to chop them up so if you grow your own matter you have to go through that process just like they did for me so you dry the root and then you have to chop it up into fine pieces in order to get the color to extract properly. So this is how I get mine at the moment. And it's almost, it's a pretty fine powder, the one that I get, which is really nice because again, more surface area, more color will come out. So that's the matter root that I will be using today. So matter root and red quebracho are two dyes that when I add simply boiling water to it and let it sit, the color will come out and I don't have to simmer it for an hour like I do the annatto or the avocado pits. Now, if you think about the difference between the avocado pits and the annatto seeds and these, 
there's a lot of work that's been done for me in the fact that it is already a powder, which is why I don't have to simmer it so long. But when you start with the whole dye stuff, whether it's seeds or pits or um, wood bark from trees or even flowers like marigolds, in order to extract the dye, it's not in a powder form like this. So it takes time. And that's really, natural dyeing is all about time. It takes a lot of time to do each color, and then it takes the time to actually turn that into a skein of yarn. So one reference I was going to share with you, if you're really interested in starting up natural dyeing your own, this is a great book. It's called Wild Colors, and it's by Jenny Dean. You can see mine is all dirty here. Uh, but this is where I get a lot of information. It's broken down. It has in the back <clears throat> all different kinds of plants that you could get color from, what color you'd get from it. Um, it talks about mordanting your skeins of yarn or your fabric, whether it be an animal protein fabric or a plant protein fabric. So like if I were to dye cotton, that's a different process than dyeing sheep's wool or alpaca because the, the fiber, the pro, it's a protein fibers are different. So this is a great reference if you're looking into um, doing more on your own. And it also gives you approximate recipes, sort of. Uh, in all of the five years that I've been doing this, I've never really found an exact recipe online that says six avocado pits and three cups of water gives you this. Instead, it'll say add your pits to boiling water and let it simmer. It doesn't tell you quantities, which is sort of difficult because if you are only, if you boil six pits with six cups of water, your versus 12 pits with six cups of water, your concentration is going to be entirely different. So when I make the dyes, I try my hardest to do the highest concentration possible because I can always add more water to it and dilute it, but if it's already diluted, it's not gonna give me a brighter color. Anyway, that's a lot of information if you're interested in doing that, but I'm gonna get on to some more dyeing. Okay, while I'm waiting for some of my pots over here to simmer, I wanted to tell you a few more things. So I have, you can see here, this one is the red Cabracho. It's a little more pinky color. This one is the Matter Root, which is a little more orangey brown. And then I have taken out a few more. I have a very high tech system where I use old yogurt containers um, to put in some of my dyes. So. So that is how I keep track of my different dye, dye stuffs. And because they are natural dyes, they are plants, I do keep them in the refrigerator to lengthen their lifespan. Some of the things like cochineal, which actually comes from a bug that I get in from elsewhere, things like matter root, they're not quite as sensitive because they were dried to start with. But things like marigold or coreopsis, where I extract the color directly from the flower they do tend to go bad and get moldy so those I do try to use up and also one thing to note is that the longer they sit the less potent they are so the color is not as vibrant One other thing to note is extremely stinky when working with natural dyes. Not 
always extremely stinky, but it definitely has a smell unlike any other. And if that bothers you, make sure you work at a time when you can open your windows or get a hot plate and do it outside on your patio. Another important thing to note that although I am dying in my kitchen right now, mostly because it's the only space that I have big enough to do the work that I need to get done, I do not use the same pots that I use for dyeing for cooking. Everything is completely separate, including the utensils. So sometimes people think because, oh, it's a natural dye, that it would be safe to use the same pot for cooking. But that is not the case. Just because it's natural does not mean that it's safe for consumption. So there are some plants or bark or things like that that probably, number one, it wouldn't taste good, but number two, it would be dangerous or toxic for you to consume. The one that comes to mind first in my brain is pokeweed, and that is actually poisonous to humans. So if you are cooking in the same pot, it does not, it doesn't bode well for your health. So make sure if you decide to do natural dyeing that you get yourself a different pot, a different spoon, and it doesn't have to be expensive. Just go to Goodwill and get something or a secondhand store. Or I think my pots, when I started, I got them at Walmart. It was a simple stainless steel pot and it wasn't very expensive, but it certainly does the trick and it keeps everyone in the household safe. Hey everyone, I just wanted to check in before I end this video to kind of give you a little wrap up of my natural dye weekend. So if you are still watching, thank you so much for staying with me and seeing, seeing me through the end of this video. I know I can get kind of chatty, but I love to talk about natural dyes and the process and all that jazz. So when I get going, I get going. Anyway, I showed you a lot of the talking I did, I did on Saturday. So right now it's Monday. A lot of the talking I did on Saturday and I was actually, I, I stopped early on Saturday. I was so frustrated. I felt like, like nothing was working the way I wanted it to. The colors weren't meshing the way I thought they would. And that happens sometimes. I know it happens to acid dyers, the same as natural dyers. But for me, something like coffee, I would think, well, coffee is brown. It's going to it's going to muddy a color like pink to make it sort of dirty pink looking. But instead, when I put like coffee with a pink color extract, it actually turned out like yellow because the yellow portion of the coffee came out more than the brown portion. So anyway, it's a lot of color theory and a lot of sciencey stuff that I don't always I don't always pay attention to. I don't love the sciency part of natural dyes, 
But if you do love sciencey things, the natural dyes have a lot of science in them. I like the artistic stuff. So the second day you will have seen on the video, I changed to a different dye method. And where that is, instead of immer immersion dyeing, where I stick the, <clears throat> the whole skein in the water with the dye, I do a method that I just sort of developed on my own where I can use a lot less water. And then I set the dye in the oven with the heat of the oven. So when what you saw on the buffet pans where I had the water, I put in as little water as possible to keep the skeins of yarn moist. And then sometimes I will put in some color into that water before I put my yarn in. And then I add color as I go. So it's sort of like a painting for me. I kind of look at the dyes and how they're meshing. And you'll see me like squishing down the dye, the yarn. I call that massaging the yarn. And it just sort of blends the dyes in a way that makes them look more natural and fluid because the water moves between the dyes without having to add extra water because of the way natural dyes work for me. So I don't know if I do this correct or not correct in per in quotation marks, but it's how I do it. It's just sort of something I developed over the years as a way to get the colors that I wanted. So anyway, I dried all my colors and I was actually pleasantly surprised. I thought the first day that I did the dyeing, I did learn like colors that I liked together and different hues and things. I learned stuff, but I also, I felt like none of the colors were going to be colors I wanted to repeat. But when I look at them, I'll take a picture of them as I have them laid out here. They're really quite beautiful. And perhaps one of the things I struggle with as a dyer always is the really subtle colors, like the barely there colors. I love them as a artist, as a maker. I, gra I like to work with them and to have things that I wear with them. But when I dye, I feel like, oh, well, that doesn't look very... Like I did very much to the yarn, but it's actually quite beautiful. So let me show you some of the things I came up with. So the very first thing that I dyed, um, let's see. Actually, let's do the avocado pits and the annatto because I showed you how I smashed up the pits and the color. And you're supposed to get like a pink color. A lot of times I've tried, well, at least twice I've tried avocado pits and I've gotten like nothing. And I'm going to tell you that if you want to try avocado pits, you definitely, the longer you dry the pits and then smash them up with a hammer or a, um, I used a rolling pin, that is, worked way better. It And then I also left the pits in the liquid overnight. So it really gave me a really nice color. Now it doesn't look like very much. Let's see if you can see it. Um, sort of, you can see it but it's like a very bl pale blush pink. You'll be able to see it more on the photo I'm gonna take. So that actually, I really like this color. It looks like there's nothing there, but I do like it. And then this one is a natto, which actually turned out way more yellow than I thought it would. And I think that is partly because I, you know, like if I put in more, more, more uh, dye stuff, I probably will get a darker color, but again, it's a beautiful yellow. Okay, let's see what else I got here. Oh, red. Oh, my light is weird. Let's see here if I can fix it. There we go. Um, red Quebracho. So um, that was the powder mix that I got. That's from a tree. That's this one. And this one also is kind of, um, it's like a really light peachy color. If you look at it compared so you can sort of see it when you look. The top one here is avocado and the bottom is the red Cape Bracho, and it's just ever so different. You can barely see the difference. Those two were probably the most similar out of any of the two that I dyed, or any of the ones I dyed. And then this one is the co coffee and cochineal. And you can see it's definitely showing up as a yellow color. And when you, I thought it was kind of, but when I put it with the pale annatto yellow, um, again, it's hard to see. My lighting is not the best here. Um, but 
that is, it actually looks pretty decent together. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised with that one. And then I had a combination of like peachy pinks. That's what these were. And you can kind of, you definitely can see if you look at them, this one is definitely more of a pink tone to it. And this one had more uh, cochineal in it. So where's my other one? These two. So these two are basically the same. They had the same dye mixes in them, I should say. So I used cochineal, which comes from a, a bug, um, or is, it is the bug, dried and turned into a powder. They, they grow them, actually farm these bugs in um, South America. Oh, you can see the difference now. This one is sort of more pink and this one is more orange. So then what I also added to it was matter root and Coryopsis and Coryopsis is the dye that I make myself from the Coryopsis or Dyer's Tick Seed, it's called, that I grow myself. And if you like to grow plants, that is the one that I would recommend first. Coryopsis, it is these, it's kind of a bushy. The leaves are, I probably have a picture I can put in, but the the leaves are very lacy. the The green part is, but the flower there's like tons of little yellow, golden yellow flowers on. And they give this rich, rich dye that works. It gives you by itself, it's like an orangey, anywhere from a pale yellow to a bright, rich orangey yellow, almost even to a pumpkin orange, like a deep orange. So that one works really well. Anyway, this was the same dye stuff, but different concentrations. So this one, you can tell, had a higher concentration of the matter root and this one and the coryopsis. And this one had more of the cochineal, which tends to be a little more pink. And then I had these last two, and these are what I like, what I'm going to be calling my mystery skeins, because I thought these were so ugly that I, you know, I made my notes, but I was like, eh, I crossed them off on my thing, like, these are horrible. I do not want to repeat these. And so, but now I really love them. They're like two of my favorite. This one is a very, um, like a blushy, dusty rose color. And then this one is similar, but a slightly more orange than pink. Again, hard to see. I will put that picture in so you can see the difference. But, you know, the, the moral of this story is, and I knew this moral way before I started dying, because I have talked about this with other friends of mine who also die, is that you cannot judge a skein of yarn when it's wet because the colors, they look different. They look entirely different when they're wet as to when they're dry. And I knew that, but I still was like, yeah, this one stunk. And I, I, um, I got down on myself because I wasn't feeling creative from the results that I was getting. Okay, so all that to say on day two, the color you saw me dying is what is going to be a new color. I'm hoping to come out with a set of pink shades, toning on the pinks. Um, right now I have an aunt who is battling cancer and it is um, metastatic breast cancer. And so in her honor, I wanted to create a series of pink colors to put together as a set. So this one is my, I'm, so I probably will use some of these salads in that set, but this is my first variegated one that I came up with and it is going to blow out because it is is, looks the colors are kind of bright but it is orange and pink and kind of a pale creamy blush color all kind of mixed together and there are some darker shades in here as well where the colors have blended but this um, I created with red quebracho and matter root just those two colors with some um, splatters or speckles of cochineal. So you also have seen me using my little paintbrush to create those speckles or splatters as I call them because the natural dyes that I work with do not work quite the same as um, a powder when, when um, acid dyers will create speckles. So that's kind of how I do it. And I also dyed, if you can kind of see there, some variegated in this colorway of the embroidery thread that I will be carrying. So yeah, so that's kind of the, 
moral of the story here, the end of the story, but I thank you so much. Um, you'll see, I'm sorry if I'm making lots of noise. I'm actually in my office, which up until today has been all my husband because he has been working from home for the last two years, but he went back to work. At least he'll be at the office part-time starting um, this week. But I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what came out of the weekend, and although I don't have a ton of skeins dyed at the moment from the weekend, I kind of have a plan now. I am a more of an artistic dyer. I, I kind of have to do an experiment in order to see how the dyes interact with each other, especially, you know, with it being natural dyes. They don't always do what I think they should do. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about natural dyeing or anything you saw in the video, please don't hesitate to leave a message below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up to subscribe to our channel. I hope to bring you more information and videos about my dyeing and what's going on in the dye pots in the future. So thanks so much and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.